Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this episode of Tropics in US, I will be talking about Sally, Pelé, Renee, and 20. Also, let's just talk about the store to number one and the store to number three real quick. And then we'll head on right on over to Tropical Storm Sally, then Tropical Storm Pelé, um, Tropical Depression Renee, and Tropical Depression 20. So the store to number one. 20 to 30 percent chance within the next five days. A surface threw over the north central Gulf of Mexico is producing disorganized showers and a few thunderstorms. Some slow development of the system is possible while it moves westward and then southwestward over the northern and western Gulf of Mexico through the middle of the week. This is number three 40 to 60 percent chance. So Showers and thunderstorms are located near the Cabo Verde Islands are associated with a broad area of low pressure that has developed along a tropical, tropical wave. Environmental conditions support some additional development during the next few days, and a tropical depression could form over the far eastern tropical Atlantic only next week while the system moves slowly west-northwestward west by midweek. Upper level winds could become less conducive for development. So now let's talk about Tropical Storm Sally. 40 miles per hour, 20. Due to the NHC, it is 40 miles per hour, 25.7 north, 81.9 west. Moving west at 7 miles per hour. This is advisory number 5 as of 5 p.m. EDT. So. A storm surge watch is in effect for the mouth of the Mississippi River to the Alabama-Florida border, Lake Pond, Chartrain, Lake Maripas, and Lake Borg, Borg, Mobile Bay. A hurricane watch is in effect for Grand Isle, Louisiana to the Alabama-Florida border, Lake Pond, Chartrain, and Lake Maripas, including metropolitan New Orleans. A tropical storm watch is in effect for the Oklock Oni River, Florida to the Alabama Florida border. 8 to 11 p.m. EDT, the next advisories. Um, let's talk about the hazards affecting land. Also, all of these will be in timestamps to make it more easy for you guys to figure out. Storm surge. The combination of a dangerous storm surge and the tide will cause normally dry areas near the coast to be flooded by rising waters moving inland from the shoreline. The water could be could reach the following heights above somewhere in the indicated areas if peak shears occurs at the time of high tide. One second. To make, it, to make it more easy for you to see, we have the mouth of Mississippi River to Ocean Springs, 6 to 9 feet. Ocean Springs to Mississippi, Alabama, border, 4 to 6 feet. Um, Mississippi, Alabama, border to Alabama, Florida, border, 2 to 4 feet. Alabama, Florida, all the way to Chassa, How Itzka, 1 to 3 feet. Yeah, that makes it a lot easier. The deepest water will occur along the immediate coast near to the right of the landfall location where the storm will drill. Oh my gosh, my, my head ain't working today. Uh, by larger and damaging waves, surge-related flooding, 
depends on the relative timing of the surge and tidal cycle and can vary greatly over short distances. For information specific area, okay. When hurricane conditions are possible within the hurricane watcher area by early Tuesday, about 6 to 12 inches of rain is possible and a tornado too is possible through tonight over South Florida. Nice. So the earliest reasonable arrival time, if you are in the area, you need to get ready by all those times. The most likely time frame is all those times, as you see right there. Rainfall rates, we can see up to 20 inches of rain in some spots. We have 10% marginal risk. In my opinion, it could be up to 50% marginal risks. Really, it is that bad. Um... Let me just do one thing real quick. One thing. One thing. Nothing much. Just going to do one quick thing. So the wind threat. Here's a good thing. So for the amount of the Mississippi River to Gulf Port, we have around 50 to 73 miles per hour from... From around Dulac to near... The Alabama Florida border, we have around 58 to 73. And then around that, for around near, what's a city near this area? Erath, all the way on over to past Pensacola, Panama City. We have 39 to 57. And then South Florida, we have less than 39 miles per hour. And then from Park Coast up to Albany, not New York, Albany, Georgia. And there's some lag. Up to Starkville and then back on down to Beaumont, Texas. So let's see the storm surge threat. If you will. Okay, you. Flooding rain threat. Potential for moderate rain south of Tallahassee into um, New Orleans. Potential for localized flooding rain, you can see for yourself right there. And then tornado threat. We have potential for a few tornadoes for the south um, west area and up into the florida panhandle so we see here we have marine warnings um flash flood watches flash flood warnings we have tropical storm watches hurricane watches and you can see it all for yourself and then we have everything else what is this frost advisory But yeah, so let's now see the um, I also like for Sally. So as you see here, it is getting a more more thunderstorms in the center of area so it is getting more thunderstorms it's more looking like landfall in louisiana and or mississippi is becoming more and more likely and that's what most the most models are saying most models say category one hurricane but definitely tropical storm sally of course because it's still a tropical storm 
Well, guys, um, I'll be right back for our talk about Tropical Storm Paulette. I'll see you then. So, oh, sorry. So, we are going to be talking about Tropical Storm Paulette. No, this won't be as long as Tropical Storm Sally, but it's supposed so Tropical Storm Paulette is supposed to be a category two whole game while it nears into um, Bermuda. Paulette is expected to approach Bermuda as a hurricane on Sunday and be near the island Sunday night and Monday. A prolonged period of storm wind, storm surge, and heavy rainfall is expected on Bermuda beginning Sunday evening and a hurricane warning is in effect for the entire island. Preparations to protect life and property should be rushed to completion. Swells produced by Paulette are affecting portions of the Leeward Island, the Greater Antilles, the Bahamas, and Bermuda, and are expected to spread westward to the east coast of the United States during the next day or two. This force could cause life threatening surf and rip current conditions. So, Bermuda, you need to get ready and get done at Sunday 8 a.m., but the most likely is around at Sunday 2 p.m. So, as we see here, Paulette is getting a new center uh, because this storm really does not look, look that great. It, it doesn't look that good. But guys, so now let's talk about what next. Actually, we, we don't have to pause. We could just head on over and talk about what next. Tropical Depression Rene. Tropical Depression Rene. Okay. So, Tropical Depression Rene it is now a tropical depression and not supposed to be a tropical storm anytime soon. 35 miles per hour, for moving northwest to 14 miles per hour, 24.3 north, 45.6 west. Um. Yeah, really nothing much about this storm. We barely have any clumps of any activity, and it's just looking like the storm is going to die. So, so now I have to pause for 20. So now let's talk about Tropical Storm 20. Tropical Depression 20, but should be Tropical Storm Vicky. So I'll see you then. Okay, guys, so I am back. As as I said, 20 is supposed to become Vicky. Um, that is the track. It's supposed to become a hurricane. Um, they say Category 1, Max. Um, maybe even a Cat 2, but I definitely want to say Category 4. Um, this storm does look very disorganized, but still looks pretty good. The way how it looks, it definitely is a tropical depression. But here is the visible satellite. Visible satellite, you can see about the exact same. But guys, I have.